Good evening, everyone. My name is Cynthia Ritchie, and as I promised tonight, I am broadcasting live uh, from Islamabad, Pakistan. It is Friday, May the 8th, 2020. This is part one of a multi-part series describing me, my work, experiences, my truth. However, as the world changes, so too must we. I will use my platform to help amplify voices that often go unheard while respecting the privacy and cultural sensitivities of the regions with which I travel. As a friend of Pakistan, this includes sharing the good and the bad while balancing the trust and respect I have worked very hard to cultivate with key decision makers over the years. That said, I will not allow chaos or the perception of chaos to disrupt my moral compass. And when we learn better, we must do better. I am intending to read transcripts of interviews that I have conducted with a variety of teams with my travels through South and North Wazidistan since primarily 2017. I intend for these episodes to be approximately 30 minutes in length for the sake of brevity and approximately once a week for however long it takes. This interview is with tribal elder in South Wazidistan. His words are as follows. If I start writing down my experiences of war, I would finish more than 60 books. And even then, there would be some stories left out stories of what we have been through. Though it is peaceful now as it was in our childhood, this peace has cost us everything. Schools, hospitals, businesses, everything was reduced to rubble in the wake of this war. I often find myself thinking about the time of war. Those memories are now embedded in our minds and the minds of our children. We will never forget the atrocities of war for generations to come. I appeal to the international community to ease the suffering of this nation by helping Pakistan. It is only in these times of hardship that one can prove their friendship and their loyalty. These people need help rebuilding their infrastructures. We can hardly afford building our own homes back. This is a message to everyone who stands against terrorism. This is my appeal to the whole world. That is the end of transcript one. Transcript two, sitting with Masood elders, and army officials in Jandula, South Wazidistan. The Masood elder told me, at first the conditions here were not all right. Call it terrorism, insurgency, whatever. It brings us solace now that you've come here. And hopefully you'll help us because there are no schools, no hospitals. Everything has been demolished by terrorists. We ask for funds. It is up to you how much you donate for schools and colleges. There is no education here. He continues, you and the army are here standing with us. We have no hope in anyone else. There is peace because of the army. The army official, one of which who hosted me in South Wazidistan, 
who is sitting with me and the Masood elders in South Wazidistan, spoke that he served in the region when the conflict was at its peak approximately 15 or 16 years ago. He said that we could not even sit here like this. I was very much here at this place. There was no economic activity in the area. There was no social activity in the area. And there was no concept of education in the sense that people avoided sending their kids, their kids to school on time or at that time. Now, after a decade and a half, I have come back here as a commander. The most pleasant change that I have felt is that the people are asking for education, not only for the male children, but for the girls as well. We have built 92 schools, two state-of-the-art hospitals, dispensaries. However, there is a shortage of resources in terms of manpower. We're also working with concerned government departments, district management, is also helping to make everything operative. A lot has been done and a lot more is ready to be done. These are a few of the transcripts of the many interviews that myself and a few different teams have conducted over the past few years. As Many of you know, I have been in and out of Pakistan since 2009. I will focus for now on my history in Pakistan since 2010, which involves adventure, romance, and the darker side, which involves assault and abuse by men. Theft of personal property, including my laptop, email and bank accounts hacked into, my identity stolen. Why does this matter? I mentioned I would discuss my research with PTM tonight and I fully intend to do so. However, I believe that it is important to provide personal accounts, uh, context so that you as an international community can have a better understanding of what my potential biases or insights, depending on your perspective, might be. It will be difficult, but I will try to compartmentalize 10 years in approximately 10 minutes. After two humanitarian trips to Pakistan in 2010, during the Great Floods, I met Imran Khan at a fundraiser in Houston, Texas. We remained in contact. Soon thereafter, PPP invited me to work with the Federal Health Ministry as a communications lecturer. I agreed to work for free. Housing and transport were provided along with a cell phone and tablet. I also worked with an NGO, Humanity Hope. The CEO's name is Farhana Swati. She is a daughter of the then Federal Minister for Science and Technology, Mohammed Azam Khan Swati. I believed at the time assisting the government gratis while working in the NGO community would be a healthy choice. I could not have been more wrong. It should be mentioned that a big part of my background has included working in several political campaigns in the United States, working as a guardian ad litem, which is a court appointed child advocate for abused children, assessing the efficacy of the district attorney's victims assistance programs, law enforcement communications, medical research and technical writing, as well as working as a community liaison for the city of Houston during approximately 2007 and eight, where I taught them the value of social media. My academic background includes pre-law, mass communications, political psychology, criminal justice, graduate level training in clinical and behavioral psychology, conflict resolution and strategic public relations at the Graduate School of Political Management, George Washington University. Back to Pakistan. In early 2011, I assisted PTI with their social media strategies, researched and co-wrote the manifesto. During this time, I would also be introduced to other political parties, including the Mutahida Kwame movement, PMLN, 
Penal Q, Awami National Party, Jamaat e Islami, etc. I also began to travel across Pakistan extensively, including the tribal areas. Little did I know, PPP and PMLN, among others, amongst others, were spying on me while I assisted PTI. I began noticing my government dorm rooms were not in the same conditions as when I went to work. And on two separate occasions, a man tried to break into my rooms at night while I was sleeping. These incidents were reported to the then federal health minister, Maktoum Shahbuddin, and the interior minister at the time, Rahman Malik, both of whom I had direct contact with. Then in early May, 2011, the Osama bin Laden incident occurred. I suddenly no longer had my transport and was relocated to a house in Shah Shahzad Farms. The CEO of Humanity Hope, the NGO with which I was working, was not reachable. Part of my agreement with Humanity Hope was that they could provide financial statements and link me to bank accounts so that I could provide transparent accounting reports to our donors in the United States. This never happened despite my repeated requests and despite my personal friendship with the CEO of Humanity Hope, this became problematic as I began to question the ethics of the business. Minister Malik recommended I quit working with Humanity Hope as he claimed Minister Swati was under investigation for tax evasion by the US government. It is pertinent to mention that I in no way had any knowledge whether Minister Malik's claims were true. It's also important to mention Minister Swati's family previously hosted me in coordination with the Pakistan Chamber of Commerce and the Houston Mayor's Office for flood relief efforts in 2010. To my surprise, Minister Swati at that time had also arranged my meeting with Dr. Fauzia Siddiqui, who is the sister of Dr. Afia Siddiqui. What became clear to me was that a theme, a message was beginning to emerge. PPP wanted me to disassociate myself with PTI. Prior to general elections in 2013 and 2018, I noticed a marked increase in courting behaviors and harassing tactics by both PPP and PMLN. I was invited to many parties and various media houses were requesting to work with me. Primarily those influenced or connected to PPP and PMLN. At this point, I'd had a few years to study the modus operandi of PTI, PPP and PMLN, PPP was by far the most politically sophisticated and devious. From 2010 to 2013, I observed PTI lacked structure of MQM, for instance, and was, in my opinion, more of a fan club. PTI, however, has since grown and improved in many ways. This is not to paint everyone in the political opposition with a broad stroke. There are many young leaders in the key parties that I see promise in. I have friends, individuals that I consider friends in PPP as well as PMLN. Thank you for your patience while we navigate this content. Uh, it is my true wish that the international community gets to know me as a person instead of relying on a lot of gossip um, and rumors and so forth. In early 2018, Nakibullah Nakib Masood, excuse me, a young man from Azizistan was killed in Karachi. Police forces, by police forces under the guise of an operation conducted against terrorists suspecting having links with the Islamic State. This was done by Rao Anwar, long reported to be Zadari's gunman. The timing was in concert with the Masood to Hafuz movement, 27, founded by, in 2014 by Manzua Pashtin, 27 year old, um, with the name being changed to what is now known as the Pashtun Tahufuz movement, the movement for the protection of Pashtuns. 
uh, Manzor is a graduate of veterinary medicine, Gummel University, and Dada Ismail Khan. On April 23rd, 2018, the Daily Times published an article quoting Manzor Pashtin. He says, anyone who wants to verify our claims about violence against the innocent Pashtun citizens can go to the village and ask if it is a lie. You are welcome to investigate our claims. We will tell you names of the villages and the dates when those atrocities took place. He was also seeking a truth and reconciliation committee as well. We seek truth. I seek truth, not PTM's truth, not the army's truth, not my truth, but the people's truth. And there are many angles to this story. As my social media presence grew, I began to know patterns, notice patterns in communications, especially as I publicly online for the first time began to express my support for PTI in early 2018. These patterns, in my opinion, are important in assisting to differentiate between the on-ground realities and the online battle space. Through qualitative and quantitative data analysis, we examine the human cost of the war on terror. We examine PTM's claims of unlawful detention and arrest, PTM's claims of episodes of torture and violence, PTM's claims of no efforts of rehabilitation by the state, PTM's claims that the state and army are using landmines against its own people, and any cre credible evidence which points towards possible human rights violations under the Geneva Convention. Questions were posed to human rights advocates, Supreme Court advocates, Human Rights Watch, security analysts, members of the media. Interviews also included Masood elders, the tribal youth, women and families displaced in TDP camps. Since I am trying to keep these transmissions to approximately 30 minutes, I will begin to wrap up this particular episode but I will continue approximately once weekly for as long as it takes. My observations, my personal observations, as well as the research that I've conducted over the past few years have shown to me that the mainstream Pashtun are well represented. And the saddest thing that we hear, or the saddest thing for me is that the voices that we hear are not the voices of the people who have suffered. An entire generation of tribal people have grown up knowing nothing but war. And the voices that we hear on social media that claim to be the advocates of these tribal people are not the ones that were a part of the struggle. PTM raises a slogan. But the questions we also pose to PTM are, what are you doing? Is PTM building schools? Is PTM building hospitals? What are they doing for the advocacy of women and children and those who have been injured in landmine blasts? Is PTM a proper stakeholder? PTM enjoys international social media fame, but beyond that, what do they want? What does PTM want beyond international attention? They are not a political organization, so they claim, but their motivations certainly appear to be so. It is erroneous to conflate the problems of mainstream Pashtuns with former issues. One security analyst told us that PTM is not a legitimate stakeholder of voices of former Fatah. These regions have come a long way where the law of the land has been extended. Now, approximately 10 to 15 percent of the region is not cleared by the military, hence the ADP and TDP camps, um, and the inhabitants are from the non-cleared 
areas. I will continue again next week. I apologize, I must cut this a bit short. But what I also wanted to explain to the listeners is that in the following transmissions, while I fully intend to use my platform to be a voice for those whose voices often go unheard, I will also be sharing my experiences of abuse in Pakistan, and I will be naming names. I will be mentioning specifics. I will be addressing PPP, PMLN, and I will be addressing the Ministry of Commerce. I will be covering content in terms of my being attacked by a member of PPP, as well as a former lobbyist for PPP. Again, I will go into details and I will name names. I will also be mentioning my work and the tactics which these major political parties have used to threaten and harass me. Again, I will uh, not allow anyone to intimidate me or to prevent me from doing what I believe is the right thing. The tribal people need a voice. There are many challenges in the region, and I fully intend to continue with this investigation for as long as it takes. There are a lot of good people here in the country. There are also a lot of bad people. There are also those who take advantage of the individuals, the, the tribal people who have endured so much and who try to contort their genuine suffering, their genuine challenges and morph it into something that's political and anti-state. This is something that uh, I hope the international community will also look into as well. I hope for transparency. I have also shared some of my video content that I have produced over the years with uh, trusted members of the international think tank uh, community for their feedback. And this is a big part of what has evolved for me over the years. I uh, do not work for the media, but this is how life has, the hand that life has, has sent my way. I thank you for your time. I encourage uh, questions. I hope that individuals will, will remain civil in the discussion uh, in this discourse. I will be sharing in subsequent episodes, transcripts, detailed conversations, with uh, individuals that we have interviewed as part of this investigation into uh, PTM and the individuals who are managing uh, the face of PTM on social media. Uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate every one of you, the critics, uh, the individuals, who are my supporters, who are the supporters of truth and justice. And again, I look forward to your questions and we'll look forward to seeing you again, hopefully within the next five to seven days. Have a good night, Ramadan Mubarak.